means it's real. <laughs> Call it to order. Um, okay. All right, everybody that's here. Any any changes to the agenda? Any public comment that isn't scheduled? Uh, just at the fire truck update. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll take care of folks that are here so that while we're delighted to have you spend the entire evening with this, if you choose not to, <laughs> you will not be insulted. <laughs> not very much in fun. <laughs> Nims. If you come to explain how North Troy can be born to buy it. <laughs> I can't even imagine what one of those costs. Scott Griswold from Newport Ambulance. Uh, we had Johnson Division is one of four locations where we just opened our fourth in Troy. We took over for the four towns up there starting April 1st. Oh, so you now Johnson, Newport, Morgan, and for like 30, 18 pounds, I think. Geographically, we're the largest in the state. Well, my lord, not a lot of people. I was just gonna, we're talking about people. Is that an issue? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, here tonight, to get the annual contract signed, uh, I have a master copy that gets signed by all five towns as well as Excel, and we'll send that back afterwards. Um, we had some slight changes to the contract this year, one that's really pertinent. Uh, most of them were wording a lot, suggested by Ron, made things a little simpler. Um, one change that we did add um, previously, we in the contract it was stated that we manned the ambulances with um, paramedics or advanced EMTs. We have had to add EMTs. The reason for that is because of volume of power to get so last year we did 1,736 calls um, for the calendar year. As of April 30th, we've done 636 calls. So we're on track to a slightly over 1,900 calls at Johnson. Um, prior to that is last January, we added additional night crews. We only had one night crew a lot. So we were out on transfers sometimes and didn't have an 911 call. Uh, crew. So we added 911 crews at night. We do not, we're not leaving a 911 crew out of the area. We refuse to do transfers with our 911 crews now. Um, and to do that, because we have brought in that second crew, and we also put together a special pay program. If we have a third transfer or something that's needed, we now have special pay for our employees. We put it out on the radio. We've used it about 50 times this year um, just to see who responds and will come in and jump a transfer call. Yeah, right. It's worked very, very well. Sure. Um, sure. And our people like it because they're coming in for two or three hours or four hours and getting some good money and then leaving. They don't have to be there for 12 or 24 hours. So that's how, because last year we had over almost 80 um, mutual aid calls we required. As of uh, April 30th, we had seven this year. And I know three of them were that we were providing mutual aid to another set of the time, so we needed mutual aid. Um, so it's working very well. Um, so we have added paramedic A, EMT, or ENT. We're only doing the EMT if we need that third or fourth ambulance. Um, we just recently, about three weeks ago, we had five calls in 10 minutes. Um, so we were able to get two crews in the station. We toned out and we got a third crew with two people who live locally and they were at the station within five minutes. So the third crew. Cambridge came in for a fourth call, and then the fifth call was on the Eden Town Wall, and we covered it all. So our Troy crew came down and covered that. So we're able to get all crews covered, all calls covered. Are there differences in the calls that you're getting? Is it just more people? Are we getting older? <laughs> Do you know? It's getting older. 
Yeah. Yeah. Certainly doesn't help the billing, as we all, including myself, go on Medicare. <laughs> but um, I think there's additional people, and certainly um, transfers to ski areas is a very high issue. Oh. We're on track to do four ambulances at all. We're on track to do over 7,000 calls this year. Um, so how our contract also works is that if we go to funk or if we say, hey, you people and you all down here paying them, but we don't want to do a service down there anymore, or if you're not happy with us and want to go in a different direction, the contract reads, we leave, all the assets and associated liabilities go to these five towns. Now, long-term liabilities, right now we have zero long-term liabilities, our three ambulances are paid for, um, they have buildings paid for. We do have an ambulance that is being replaced on June 1st, but we are um, paying 118000 for a new ambulance. We do not have to replace the stretcher. Uh, we can transfer the stretcher to $60,000. So that saves a lot of money. $60,000? Yeah, because of the hydraulics that is um, wow. mandatory now. Um, so, as of June 30th, the structures are pretty amazing. We don't really know if it's yeah, no, that's your um, it's just really attach them they lift by themselves, they slide in by themselves. Yeah, they really it's, right. <laughs> <laughs> Never been picked up off the road. Yet. <laughs> really helps with working pumps, right? Oh, uh -huh. yes. right. Back in your yeah, for sure. Except for trying to get people downstairs. Um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> as of June 30th, we will have completed 20 years of service in Johnson. So July 1st, we're having okay. a celebration of that. Um, still putting it together, um, mm -hmm. but we will be doing um, bike helmet programs, um, car seat programs that day. We'll be doing CPR training for anybody that wants that. Um, people can look at the ambulance and see what stretchers work. And the dark helicopter is going to be able to fly out and stay okay. for a few hours and let uh, people okay. see the helicopter. And then, of course, they'll take off as well. Um, but some of the things would be done. Um, so we'll be sending out invitations to all the select boards and all the okay. and radios and papers. Um, but any questions on what we're now doing? So you're being able to stay, I don't mean, know if I want to for anybody, so we're fully staffed, reasonably staffed? We are fully staffed right now, um, and we had a um, person from Southern Vermont send their resume in to us. They wanted to work in Johnson. Oh. We did not have an opening. Uh, they took a um, opening in Newport, and with the promise that if there is a full conversation that comes up, they would automatically get that. So people have been coming to us you know, for their locations. Um, we got a call in December um, to just talk to the four towns, Jay, Troy, Lowell, West, even Westbury, there's so many West things. So we got a call in early December. We met with them just before Christmas. I met with them in January and in late January. They gave me the go ahead to start service there April 1st. We had a, um, we were in April 8th. We were in a building. It was, we found a old garage that was the right size had and dirt floor and everything, but we had it completely renovated, insulated, bedrooms, bathroom, kitchen, living room, and the bay put in. Um, and house in three months and really well. Um, so we're there. I know. Yeah, it was not easy, but we got it done. Um, so yes, we're fully staffed. And yeah, I think we had one of them before right now, and we're able to, in that time frame from January to April 1st, we were able to need six employees for that area, and we were able to pick up all six. Um, doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. Well, yeah, right. It sounds it's like it's going to be pretty good. Really pushing education. That's one of these things we're doing on um, July 1st. We're hoping we can get people. 
interested yeah. in the field. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a well paying field. Yeah. You can work two 24 hour days during the week and um, have five days off or work full time for yeah. somebody else or, you know, yeah. as well. Right. Um, so we are very fortunate we've got very good people. Yeah. And, and that's that makes all the difference in the world. Well done. Yeah. So the contract for Hyde Park, the lives in the year of hundred and one thousand words. What's up in that? One hundred and ninety four thousand. Yeah. And that was a three percent increase that we were pleased with. Um, so that is my main focus is get a sign and then go to Eden Swing with their fortune sign. I've had a couple questions for you. Uh, how many divisions did you say? We had four divisions. Thank you. And how does the contract read? You had mentioned something the contract we reads like. If the contract, if it, the contract isn't signed, whether by us or by the five towns, the assets and the liabilities move to the towns. Um, and they can, or they can tell us to keep them and we'll have to figure out. But the towns have the first right of appeals if we have taken liabilities, which but they're not going away. So yeah. <laughs> certainly don't plan to, but I mean, it'd be towns would be a good position if it ever came to that right. today. Today, yes. <laughs> and we're a private nonprofit. There was nobody making huge money up all this. And what day is the celebration? Do you have a date for that? Uh, July 1st. Thank you. Have any gotten more questions yet? Thank okay. you so much. Need a, need a motion to accept the, I will make a motion to Sorry. accept the contract and that the change is <clears throat> stated. Okay. Do we have to assign someone to sign it or have that one all signed? We all signed No, it. just one person. Just one person. Okay. Just one person. Designated member of the select board. Yeah. Well, also, should I say I designate Susan Bartlett to sign on her behalf? <laughs> Okay. Second. Perfect. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Thanks, Scott. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll get you the coffee after I get signature small five towns. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all that you folks do. Really Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Ryan was the ad for a right. Right. Ryan, Ryan is the ad, but I don't see what he is. Right. Arpa. Right. We're not going. We're gonna make her wait the whole time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> at least two and a half hours away. Okay. <laughs> Come back for yeah, there you go. Oh, sweet. I, I think Ryan could be really quick though. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Ryan wants to then he can go home and get some rest. Oh, oh, oh so yeah. Okay. Um so we narrowed down to one contractor for the fire truck out of three. And three bit it. So now I guess I just need your. We got it down to $552,472. That is depending on the only thing that will, well, a couple things might change it is if the price of the cabin chassis changes, because that's out of their hands. Or he's going to, after we sign this, Agreement, he comes up and spends four or five hours and we go through the contract line by line and make sure that he has everything that we want. So, a couple of things got missed, I mean, whatever, but they keep their price. The only thing he says is a 
is the uh, taxi bike if that changes. As of right now, there's like 430 days bill time. What happens to the old truck? We'll sell, try to sell it. What do you think that's going to be worth? Did he ask? The, they don't really like to deal with the truck. They'd probably give you nothing for it, really. <laughs> they do have brokers out there that I think you can hire, like this. That's all I do is sell you fire truck. So when the time will come, I was going to just try to reach out to somebody like that. And if they could sell it for us. And... Yeah, what, what did Northside Park do? Okay. They should yeah. have them. somebody. Yeah, they no, they didn't advertise that. Brent see somebody looking for one on the internet or something. And reached out them. to yeah, them. Yeah, reached out to them. It's gone, right? Yeah, last, yeah. last week. Yeah. Yeah, somehow you see somebody on the internet looking for one and like messing the guy up. And that's how, he, that's how they got their head down. But. How well, long this one will be out yeah. before it'll be here? It's 440 days or something like that. So, you just so they have a cat. Right. They have a cat chassis? No, not yet. Something they have. But I think they might have a certain amount of allocated to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know more when I meet with the guy again. But then we go in Lexus, Illinois. But their service department's right in the middle of the future. So we don't have any problems. Right but there. they're all doing that now. But there ain't nothing around here hardly building anymore, is there? No. no. They used to build them. Right even, even ones in Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They used to build them right down here in Little Section. Yeah. Right. Oh, really? We had one in Vermont? Yeah. Well, Leo's used to be able to do it with mine. Oh. Yeah, well, that was a long time ago. That was a short long R 600. Yeah. Okay. So Ryan and I were talking about this, the variable on the cabin chassis and the fine line detail that you can only get to after the order is put in. And, we and just, then there's going to be certain things after the fact, like our radio guys are going to come up and swap all the radio stuff out of the truck and, you know, uh, little things like that. This number just been updated. I've been a while, but, but, three, but yeah, we're going to swap them in. Three years. But instead of, if we had them put them in, we'd have to have our radio guy come out, take them out, right. ship them out there. Right. They install them, and then just go in there. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, so there's going to be a few little things here and there that we're going to have to do once it gets here, but not the moment. Yeah. So the, the uh, variable purchase price. Not real comfortable, but if the voters approved up to six hundred thousand for borrowing, Ryan thinks that the actual purchase price, including those add-ons, will be under six hundred. So you yeah. can have an authorization for the fire officers because that's how the contract was written to sign the order okay. up to not exceed six hundred, which would include two parts. One is the truck, truck, and one is the miscellaneous setup parts. Later. They should they should be all right. They should be fine. Oh they, yeah, I mean, yeah. On the, I mean we got fifty thousand dollars. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so it's a little bit of a wild card, but still. A lot, a lot of goddamn changes since 1965 to that Ford truck we had. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we bought this truck, the one we're replacing, that was only 200 Oh, let's go show you how we take it on. And that was 25 years? 20 years? 2000. Oh, 23. Yeah. Yeah. By the time we get rid of it, it'll be 25. So right. Get right. It. And it's on 25 years cycle. Yeah, yeah. that's their estimated yeah. life. Well, just Susan signed it to be no author, <laughs> authorizing the, authorize the fire the officers. officers. Yeah. I need three, like four got, signatures. We got three signatures. We got three signatures. Yeah, so I need a motion to authorize <clears throat> the uh, fire officers. Fire officers. So, okay, second. That's whether not to exceed the 600. To the, Ryan's going to be responsible for watching all the odds and ends. Right, right. Anything that goes over 600 it comes out of his paycheck. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. They should, they should be all right. Who's building it? All the papers by the Fire. Oh, yeah. Alexa, fire. Alexa, fire. Anybody opposed? Do I? Do I have to say? No. Okay, then I. <laughs> no, for that one. Okay. 
She has to get ready to split check and run. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> David Rue is online. Okay, that's right. No. Terrific. They're all set. Anything else, Ryan? No. Who is that? Do we hear anything more about Greg Powell? What if you will borrow the time? Yeah. Greg Powell? The estimate? The drawing? And... Uh, he's waiting for a quote from their steel guy. Oh. So if you can call the steel guy and get him going, then Greg to finish his work. Oh. Greg has no luck pushing those guys. Yes. Okay. Next, we have. What's there? Gonna, we have our lawyer, David Rue. Hi, David. How are you? Good. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Rue. We're I'm from Stitzel Page and Fletcher in Burlington. Um, I think Ron wanted me to just give a sort of a quick introduction and overview of what we do for the town. Um, and then I can, I would recommend if we're going to discuss ongoing litigation, uh, namely the um, Forest Hill zoning housing uh, zoning center zoning appeal and the FOSS case. Uh, we would go into executive session to discuss specifics on those. But um, we, Stetzel Page and Fletcher, we're a law firm in Burlington that represents school districts and municipalities around the state. Uh, we have roughly 100 municipal clients uh, between towns, villages, sewer districts, uh, things like that, fire districts. Um, but we've provided general legal advice and legal services to Hyde Park. Um, it started with zoning work and over the last uh, few years it's grown into more comprehensive legal services um, from financing if those issues come up to uh, me personally I handle mostly real estate land use uh, zoning and uh, general municipal advice things like open meeting law uh, public records act compliance those types of uh, subject matters um, for the town specifically, we've recently uh, done projects like reviewing the town meeting day warning, making sure the articles are, are written properly. Um, done the uh, we we reviewed the ARPA sub recipient contract uh, with the fire the North Hyde Park Fire Department, I believe. Um, the preservation trust easement for the uh, old Grange Hall in North Hyde Park. Um, we provide, we, we often issue or respond around zoning questions about various applications and uh, worked on uh, certain appeals like the uh, gravel pit zoning appeal, the Forest Hills case, uh, the FOSS appeal. And we also do work uh, on highway projects like the uh, Johnson Street extension, West Main Street sinkhole project. And uh, pretty soon I'm gonna be working with Ron more intensively on the beam road um, relocation and possible discontinuance. Um, we also did uh, the appeal of the health order for the rental housing unit, rental units on Centerville Road. That was resolved amicably with uh, the tenant moving out and the property owners uh, in, improving the property. And then we also do general ordinance review. So uh, we provide a broad base of services to all our municipal clients. Uh, there are now uh eight attorneys here in our office and we keep growing so um we all handle various aspects of municipal law and practice um it's not always me who responds to town inquiries though uh it is usually me uh but there are others in our office like bob fletcher who does finance and john clash who's very well versed in, in personnel and labor relations um, Joe McLean also does uh, general municipal law and zoning. So um, we, we've been working for, with the town for a while now, and, and Susan's familiar with that, but I wanted to make sure the new members had an opportunity to, well, first for me to introduce myself to them, and then if they have any questions, uh, go feel free to shoot. Nope, nobody has any questions. All right, great. Well, um, you know, I, I don't know if you want to go into executive session to discuss Forest Hills appeal and the FOSS case. Uh, I, I think that's a good idea uh, yeah. because I'll, I'll be sharing uh, attorney client privilege uh, information about uh, strategy and where the cases stand. That would be great. 
We'll so be back. We'll be back. That's right. <laughs> At least it's nice outside. <laughs> <laughs> Highway training and incentives don't take long. They put we wait longer. But I know. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, I think it can actually be pretty quick. Okay. Um, in 2021, the select board agreed to the union contract with Highway, which included a paragraph uh, saying that the employees are eligible for a taxable cash payment award, one per fiscal year for completing training programs uh, set out by the town, which we haven't done yet. <laughs> so it's been a couple of years now going plus, and we do have a sketch of one uh, which deals with established training programs from the Vermont Local Road. And they have credit hours and things like that. I think they have four levels of certification, and the training program idea was to recognize people for completing it. So that was about it. Isn't MSHA training mandatory? Yeah. It is, right? <laughs> yeah, there's some MSHA, MSHA, MSHA PPR, Figer. CDL, obviously. Yeah, or, those aren't included in the incentive program. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Those yeah, are, that's what they have to do. Yeah, that's the basic training. Right, that's, we have to do that. That's every year thing. Got it. <laughs> Yeah. And then you move into the local roads. Okay. And then, okay, sorry. Okay. Yep. And then we have sort of these extra add ons, which are the B level for state of Vermont requires us to have a certified inspector, which includes some training and some regular testing of the underground storage tank. Um, uh, we have should have a designated safety manager that is more active in training and policies and you know, uh, what they call them tailgate talks, oh, and, you know, blah, blah, but it's disorganized. They kind of do it. Oh, this is really important. Let's do this one, but they don't have a regular safety person doing that. So that's really not being done. And we're just starting to get our bearings on the MRGP data upload, which is a digital system for recording all the town's road work that's done. So it goes into a state database and you keep track of it that way. Um, the third one C is the regional training workshop, which, uh, that's a negotiated one. I, we didn't really do that. We sort of talked about it with the brine machine. Like we're going to try something oh, brand new. Yeah. It's going to save money, but was there any reward or, you know, on the back end for staff when that was done? I don't think we did that part, but that's the type of program where you could say, this is going to take a year to figure out, implement research, meet with other towns and put it in place. And it's going to save tax dollars. And some of that should go back to the the crew for that extra, you know, cash bonus or something like that for that. But we never we don't do that that often. But that's an op okay. that's an option kind of thing out there. Um, so those are the three areas that, and that's as far as we got. I mean, we've been thinking about this for a while. We haven't really come up with a deal back and forth. For yeah. So Ryan's the union rep. I'm the town's rep, and. The contract says the select board will do something at some point. There's no deadline on that. Sort of makes sense to do it in the three-year contract term somewhere yeah. <laughs> instead of after. But um, so anyway, that's that's as simple as it is. I, and I guess without it really expecting a decision tonight, you're seeing this for the first time. Um, you know, roll in. I don't know if you guys had anything. Morristown. I know Johnson set up something. I don't know what other towns do. Some of it you negotiate at your hire and say, I'm bringing this to you here. Give me some money. And that's the last time you kind of get some I think recognition. Johnson does something similar to this because they go to a lot of classes. Yeah. 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 They get, I don't know what your hours are. You don't have how many hours you get. Yeah. Those dollars, but. And some towns will set up. Uh, I know they have like. You know, if you learn a well, about 75 cents an hour. Yeah, and I, I Stowe was talking about uh, operator one, two, three. I would say it is. You know, Richard Wadley would have something like that. I mean, I just. He does that stuff, yeah. I, I just took class through him yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Richard Wadley. Oh. He's with Associated General Contractors oh, of Vermont. Does. And they have training. He's the training guy. He's. He's, he does statewide training, contractors, municipals. 
He's the one that will send out tailgate talks, you know, oh, kind of like a piece of paper. Training. Oh, okay. So he's the trainer for all the state contractors. So he, since January, he's been out every, yeah. every, every day. He was reporting. Went off there yesterday. Yeah. So the, you know, the operator level job description we haven't done. So we have heavy equipment operator. And then we have lead operator. And then we have road foreman. But, you know, within those grades, there's not a lot. There's only one foreman generally, right? And there's usually only one lead assistant foreman. And then the other two or three people are stuck at operator level. So we don't have anywhere for them to move. Unless the top people move out. Uh, right. uh, more chiefs here pretty quickly. Exactly. <laughs> so there's no there's no steps, I guess, within that job. It's like you're hired as operator, you're the operator until the top people leave. Yeah, right. That's what we talked about. Right. So, so, we're trying to get them for training, then you so the, the training, training can be right. The training can be individual to the person. Stowe was thinking about breaking operator into one, two, three for years of service, you know, five, 10, 15 year service. And that comes within a pay adjustment as you tick off your years of service. We'll yep. see why these towns just don't get together and do it all at once. I was just yeah. going to say the same thing. Like, why couldn't we do like, oh, gee, we've talked about how many times we talk about joining with other towns, right? Yep. And do stuff like that. Yeah. So I don't like I said we're and and we're actually struggling more with retention issues, right? And replacement issues. So you have retention issue now, and then you have replacement. Is double hard is retention, mm -hmm. so it's a lot easier to retain than it is to replace. So, how, what do you do with that? A training plan is part of that. Uh, having decent supervisors and managers is a part of that. Having a base wage that moves with the market a little bit instead of getting stuck behind. All those things work towards retaining. Those classes only benefit the town. You're just learning more on right. what's going. On. You know, different techniques to do here yeah. and there. I mean, it only benefits the town. So. It does, but we need to retain those people that we're training. <laughs> it all goes right. Yeah. We don't want to train them and have them all go. You don't want to be training them. Right, exactly. So, anyway, that's just an opening discussion. Yeah. You know, any ideas? We're when we tried to reach out to Johnson or other towns ourselves, but they're, they're not responding as quickly as we you wanted to. You know where the best training is, don't you? Yeah, well, that's why the level one, two, three operator is years of service in the seat. Sure. So the, the you know, recognize the let one. Oh, yeah, but as far as operate, uh, as far as running the equipment, yeah. But these other classes on ditching or road maintenance or grading techniques or. Or the underground storage stuff. Seat yeah, time. all of that helps, right? Seat well, some of it, well, yeah. you're absolutely right. But there's a lot of other stuff that you just, there's no seat time. It's just learning. I think it's a combination of all that. So sure. what's not in here is longevity. What's not in here is the... Well, in the underground storage tank, that's that's our fuel tank up there. Our underground fuel tank. So you're about to Yep. Oh, okay. And there's a lot of paperwork to that. And you got, we got, I got to inspect that every week. That's for Amstrad too, right? Is that a pit though? That's for the state has its waste division. That could be from the fire department. That's fire department. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think you need to leave. I'm looking for him at the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's right. But we probably sometimes should we can figure out the you know the years of service too that kind of training and stuff. Yeah, I don't know how, how you quantify the years in seat. You know that Roland's talking about. I, I think it is a longevity thing, showing that you're. Uh, skilled in a in a mm -hmm. operation of a piece of equipment, right? A combination years of service may not mean anything if you're sitting in the grader and never do the excavator. You'd be an expert grader service person, you know. I don't, I don't know how to I don't know how to get to your how to quantify and reward somebody for years. Of this. I think that operator one two three is kind of it gets at that a little gets bit. it down a little bit closer to it. Yeah, so years of service. Just thinking, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and certainly years of service in Hyde Park is important because you get to know the nooks and crannies that you, no matter how well experienced you are, you don't know that when you come into Hyde Park. Right, right. So there's a little benefit to longevity in Hyde Park. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, it's a start. Yeah, I think so. I think we, if we can finish this by the end of June, that'd be good. I think that was our goal yeah. to get it done this fiscal yeah. year. Do you feel that there's a lot of cross training done? Right. Yeah, pretty, pretty much, right? When someone's missing, you guys can. 
I just see that's on here. That's what I was asking. Well, it's been a goal for a while so that we can have at least two operators that are comfortable. Right. Versus only one operator that yeah. feels comfortable. Let's go exactly. into a piece of equipment. If you have three or four, that's great. I don't we get we get have two off from the American engaging board on the radar. Yeah, so I don't know if we'd ever get to three or four, but definitely having yeah, at least it's, three, absolutely, is, yeah. it's really critical to have two greater operators because there's a lot of times where the grading has to be done and right. it can't wait, you know, kind of thing. You got to get out there. Oh, I didn't know Mark. I thought only Jason could. So Mark, yeah, Mark, too. Mark yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. that's, that's all. Maybe the end of June, the same way it goes. Anything else? Nope. We're good. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Go to the fire meeting. Take care. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, I was invited to come by Ron, who says we have to get a request for funding from the Art of Funds to the Second Congregational Church in Hyde Park. Um, and there is a, a letter of request that Ron has. I don't know whether he circulated that or not. Um, and I understand tonight that you're going to just basically go through what you've got, figure out sort of the triage. Um, I wanted to invite the select board, um, if they are interested, to schedule a meeting at the at the church. We'd love to have you come and use our church and. Prior to the meeting, we'd be happy to give you a little tour of um, the building and what we need, but we feel that we're an integral part of um, High Park Village and High Park Town. And like many churches, um, we're finding that we have a, a dwindling congregation. Vermont has this least religious state in the union, it turns out. Um, so we have a wonderful old building that has a lot of historic value, but it's a real icon in town. Um, and we really need some help in doing some repair work on it. The stained glass windows need to be reletted. The roof needs to be um, fixed in places. And we have um, areas of rock that need to be addressed. And that's what we're asking funding for. Um, we are developing a plan to um, seek funding both from the community and from grants. So um, if you'd be willing to consider us favorably, um, we could leverage what the town is giving us. And this obviously would be a one-shot um, deal. We wouldn't be coming back to ask you for more. Um, but you put out a call for a request for how can we best spend our ARPA money and I understand that not everybody jumped up and said we go to that meeting. Um, I talked to Ron at the at the town meeting in March, and he said that you were considering some nonprofits and that I should, we should go ahead and apply. So um, I'm just here to introduce myself and what you're doing it. Um as we said you need or whatever. Yes. That's a, that's okay. She, that, she summarized it perfectly. Oh, okay. So okay. it's one hundred twenty-five thousand okay. dollars for uh, the the windows, which is kind of a combo window project. It's sills and the window. Yeah. Um, so, and the windows are fifty. The roof is. I, mean, I couldn't get my printer to print out the document. I'm, I'm having a weird time, Ron. And that happened to that email I got the header and the footer, but nothing else. Um. Roof repairs are estimated to be $32,000. Um, stained glass windows in total. Um, we, have a, we have a quote of $100,000, and we would be asking you to, to um, help us get to that $100,000. And the, the rot issues in the various places um, are $43,000. So whatever is left over after the roof and the and the window sills will go towards the windows. Then there's a bunch of other stuff that we're going elsewhere to try and get that funny. <laughs> <laughs> so that was in my head, I'm trying to figure out the the select words challenge, right? 
So you have 150,000 spent, you have six, 600 left to obligate. You have about uh, 18 months plus or minus to make those obligations. So you have a little bit of time still. All of the requests so far have been, except for one, have been town entity, town property, town or municipal, like the fire district right. or the fire station. So those are all mean, standard municipal. Uh, you have one request pending from the Memorial Community House for the shelter. Of course, that was for the Main Street shelter, so I don't know what they're doing. I think that they might have more than enough money for the Center Road project because they got a huge grant. I don't know. They haven't pushed that for eight months or so since they wrote the first letter. The church, the Second Congregational Church in particular, for this project is is one of those hybrid purpose things. You know, it's not a water line. It's a commute, sort of a church needing to sustain itself by adding community elements. And, and we see this nationally as well as in Vermont. The, you know, and in Canada, they actually adopted a sustainability plan for the UCC churches in Canada because they're so concerned about the population decline and membership decline and service visits. How many people are not going to services anymore? Uh, Vermont UCC, and this is this is my this is my somewhat of a concern is that do you spend public money without a strong community piece on a church that's sort of declining in its sustainability or by by vitality? Not not to be harsh in the negative sense. But you, I think you have to have that community piece. So what is the community piece? The community piece that you talked about is the historic Main Street. It's the last church on Main Street. And it's the community services that are potential there that aren't part of church. Well, there's services. some exhibiting right. use by the community that isn't connected to the church at all. I feel like you have a lot of activity. We have AA meetings there. We are now the designated emergency evacuation site for the elementary school. We're the only building in town mm -hmm. other than the schools that can hold that number of people. Um, and we had a drill, um, I think about two or three weeks ago where everybody in the elementary school marched down and found their places where they were gonna go. Oh. Um, um, and this would be if there was any kind of an emergency. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we have musical concerts that are open to the public. We share the space with the library. Um, when they have events that they want to do, and one of the neighbors does events through through the church. We've had uh, rehearsals for the community, the Memorial players when they can't use the opera house because it's too cold. Um, we've had Sunday, Saturday breakfast for the community chicken pie dinners, classes, lectures, and a huge Halloween party. I was going to say, Halloween party. <laughs> over, yeah. over 200 kids. Oh, yeah. So um, we really are a community resource. I mean, I see us as having um, as much of an element of community use as we do for church use. Yeah. So having said that, I think that's where the sort of the rub is if you want to talk about how you're making decisions. Right. It's like there's a relatively big pot, but you just take 100 here and 100 here, pretty soon the pot's gone. Right. And you have 25 projects to look at, and you have sustainability issue, which is is there. But a lot of times we want to buy into the community piece. Right. We don't have a relationship with the church. The school does. The community does. So you could have if you wanted to. So that's <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. so anything that will work. I don't, so I think that's I think that's why we want to talk about it because it, it, to me it's an obvious concern. Right. Just because the, the world of churches, you know, how many I was growing up visited in uh in Groton when I was a lot smaller, and they were sharing uh pastors then. You know, between St. John's, Barry Danville, and I think it was Barton or something like that, they would share then. And now it's even the same, the same thing. And then the, how quickly the other church sort of went into the Catholic Church. 
Well, the Catholic Church is a whole other thing. Different animal. I can yeah. say because um, as a result of um, innumerable lawsuits because of the pedophilia that existed in the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church has had to pay no money. a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. And um, and also, I think that um, you know there aren't people that are joining religious orders the way they used to, and and so um, that that has I, I don't see them as being comparable. I mean, we have an incredibly dedicated group of people um, who've been involved in that church for quite a while, and um, some new families that have come in, and I think we. We, we're on a really good trajectory right now. We, I don't know if you met Devin Thomas, our minister, who unfortunately is moving on to a full-time job in Burlington, mm -hmm. but um, I think it's the first time in, in a number of years that we felt that we're really, we've really got some momentum going and, and we're determined. I mean, we needed to paint the church and we didn't have the money and Tracy Lewis and I, went out and knocked on doors and talked to people and Got it done. we were able to to get the community to contribute to a $35,000 painting project. Yeah. Um, I think people who don't go to church don't want to see that church disappear. And, um, you know, if we don't make an investment in it, it it's going to go the way of the barns. So... Um, uh, did you... I don't know if I sent this email to you on the in the National Register, National Historic Register, uh, <clears throat> done or possible? Yeah, well, I'm looking at, uh, there's, there's, the main certainly, street. it's certainly the main worth street. looking yeah. into. Uh, yeah. I mean, there are a couple of, of state resources that, um, that support mm -hmm. church buildings, mm -hmm. and we're going to go to them with grants. The next cycle for this um, housing and community development has a program. Yeah. And they're, they're um, I think the proposals are due in, the guidelines come out at the end of the summer and the proposals are due in October. So we're going to approach that. Um, How old is that from? It was built in 19, this particular one was built in 1910 after the fire okay. um, that swept through that end. Of That's that right. Yeah. Again. And they were able to save the stained glass windows. So the stained glass windows are actually older than the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we did an open house in a Hyde Park um, home base. And it was wonderful because people came back who got married there. Yes, you know, they, they, yeah. I got married 25 years ago. I walked in the door. <laughs> since then. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lot more than just religious value. And, and I think if you think of the town without that church, and it's the only church now that's in, that's in the village. I mean, without the Catholic church, there's no right. church in the village. So, so, I mean, you've got to figure it out. But, <laughs> um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I do hope you'll think seriously about maybe having a meeting there. Um, you know, we Will you problems. feed us more than chocolate? Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly will. <laughs> yeah. It's totally doable to have a remote location for meetings, which is a little bit of pre-planning right. and get it exactly. over there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have Wi-Fi, and you can send people in if you need it to. So, do you have any questions? Is there anything I can? I think it's a timing question. We haven't really got into the list yet of all these projects. Some projects are happening by osmosis. You know, you had a good idea last year and it just sort of happens over the course of 12 months, even because we weren't dealing with it through ARPA. We found other sources. So if you have a capital campaign or if you have a project or it's an emergency or if you have, we're going to do grants this summer and it would help if you would commit x dollars to get to show those agencies that you have a commitment that's cash ready not maybe the whole 125 but something yeah yeah those kind of things so if you're i don't know where you're at with the whole well process. we're going to need to i think the housing and, and community development expects some um, input from you know some dollar input from both the church and from other sources so yeah. i would say that you know Something would be really helpful with the grant for the grant application part. Yeah. Okay, and then 
then yeah. the 125 would just be the standing request. But all right, no, I was just wondering because then we go through these, some of them can be uh, we have 202.1 million dollars with the request. Well, a lot of those requests are full funding, and the board has to figure out if it's a full funding approval or if it's a partial or no funding. Yeah. Yeah, but a partial is helpful to some applicants because they're in the midst of a bigger project, like Lomo Community House, for example, or you guys. You know, if you have one or two grant programs that you're yeah. going for, having a little bit more local match really it elevates the the ranking of Absolutely. that. Absolutely, right. Absolutely. So, however, you guys can help. We do have to figure this out pretty soon because, like you said, some of the grant rounds are once a year. They're in the summer or fall, and then you wait 12 months, you know, that kind of thing. So if there are, maybe we should revisit that list or I can revisit it maybe and just like, like try to make contact with those original people and say, where are you at? Are you still doing this? Yeah. And then have like a true up list of, of that question of yeah. where are you at? How can we help versus denied or approved? Yeah, right. So because- we'll try that for the next meeting. I think so, because that, we haven't done that yet. No. And we need to, yeah. you could yeah. spend some you time with- Community requests. It's not just us. Right. Maybe yeah. I want to start with you. And, yeah. Um, I saw a few others. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. I I think that probably the the thing that would be the most attractive to the community is the is the thing that you see, which is the stained glass windows. I mean, they're sort of unique. And I think that we can probably be pretty successful raising money from individuals to fund that. But where typically organizations have trouble getting getting people excited is about a slate for the roof, right? Rod and Rod boards, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and the painting project was a no brainer because everybody that during the pandemic had walked by the church and seen all the peeling paint, and so. Um, when we went out to talk to them, you know, they said, yes, of course. So um, I think we could do pretty well with the windows, but I think we really need to help with the other stuff. So. Mm -hmm. If you want to prioritize things, that's the way. And of course, the sills and the windows kind of go together. I mean, there's that piece. <laughs> I was going to ask you about that. Um, so the sills, how much are the sills and how much are the windows? Well, it's I, I listed it as rock repair, and it's $43,000. And like many things, you never know what you're going to have to do until you get in there. And usually you find out it's more than you can see from the outside. So, um, and then the, the slate roof was 32. And the stained and glass. The stained glass was whatever's left over, which I think is 50. 50, yeah. Yeah, I think the total cost for this just the stained glass alone is maybe 20. The, the, the estimate we got from the um, the guy in Derby was $100,000 for all the stained glass handles. And we don't have to do them all at once. So we would do a a wall at a time, and there are three walls that have stained glass windows. What was your name again? My name's, you probably should use my real name, yeah. which is Virginia <laughs> Brooks. But well, that's not what I wrote on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can use that. That would be fine. People know. I 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 I know. 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 I and I don't any you need to ask. It's always fun to spend money, but you know, <laughs> too many birds in that it gets complicated. So perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Webb. Thanks for having me. Okay. okay. Bye bye. bye. Hey, the Moyle Valley Rail Trail scoping is very all right. It's easy. Yeah, it's easy. 
and get a little background that Susan can report. Uh, the town applied for and received a Lamoy Valley Rail Trail Community Grant for enhancements at the Rail Trail 75 Depot Street extension, which right now includes a parking lot and a portal uh, It will include a art installation project on the south side of the trail, and David Ring installed a fence structure of sorts, or he calls it the corral, on the property. Uh, we leased the property from VTrans and part of the grant requirements uh, for the scoping study, which is really looking at the facility and whole. How do people get down from Main Street? What's the safety issues on Depot Street where the trail crosses the paved road? And what about parking and the layout of the corral and kiosk and picnic tables? And try to look at the whole triangle area. We call it the triangle project. So the first step in this grant is to have a, a local group of me and Susan and Greg Paws and regional planner Victoria Helwig or Tori. And we looked at those uh, response. There were six engineering firms that the city said we could choose from to do the work. And the selection committee met today to look at those uh, engineering proposals. So the total project's 38,000. The town match is coming from the pedestrian uh, reserve fund, which is 20%. Um, so the, the grant's about $30,000. And we think that that's what the consultant will propose. They didn't propose a cost yet. All we have is a budget of total project 38000 This task is to select the engineering firm. And the committee has a recommendation after looking at six different proposals. Go ahead, Susan. I definitely make you crazy. <laughs> you end up with this so much information that it's like you know how do you, how do you sort through it that's where I, uh, I called Rod I said I can't work <laughs> he said just think about a couple of things you think is important to the project and look for that and there's massive things because every all these all these engineering companies they've been pre-approved by the state so, mm -hmm. so you know they're good you know they're confident that's why you you, say. You, what what this really is is a V Trans project that they put on the towns to manage. Uh, would you mean to tell me we got to actually lease the land? We already we already do. Yeah. We, do. Yeah. we have since two thousand sixteen. Yeah, yeah. We lease about an acre from Agency of Transportation for the trailhead project, and that's one time pay. Yeah, we pay three hundred to initiate the lease, and I think. They used to charge ten dollars a year, yeah. and then they stopped charging yeah. a couple of years ago. So I don't even know where the charging right. went. It's too much work to get the ten bucks. So yeah, <laughs> but we all lease it. It's a twenty-five year lease. Yeah, basically, super expensive one. Yeah. <laughs> so well, if you want to switch to hot dog stand, we might have a spot for you. <laughs> no, I'll pass you. <laughs> so the um. <laughs> Let's see, if you look in your packet, if you look on page six, that's where Ron, Ron came up with a great little summary of the, yeah. of the, of the and, and, and what's, it's, what's great is when three people go through it and all come to the same conclusion, and we ended up actually down the, the folks down, what's their VHB there? Oh. BHP Van Hughes and something, something, yeah, yeah. out of Burlington. Because these folks, we've done the others are good, we've done lots, and we have lots of projects going on in Du Bois and Kingdom. But of course, this this is a little project, it's $38,000 in rent, so it's nothing. And, and in the cover sheets, everybody here, they're $270 million, you know, right. But these folks have, um, um, they were from the beginning involved with the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail. And the original design, and so they have a real commitment and interest in. It. And of the of the three, they're a little bit smaller. So I think a smaller project would probably have better access. And I think for the town to have an opportunity to work with another company, you know, would just will be good for us to expand our our horizons as well. Um, again, they've done besides the the Lamar Valley Valley Trail, they've done a fair amount of of rail trail sort of work. And they've done a lot of work with intersections that aren't smart. So you think they want to come off the trail, go across the road, all those sorts of things. So 
So we decided these would be the folks that we would that we would recommend. And now it goes back into the state, and who knows how long it takes the state to respond to something. You know, who knows? But we so they have our boxes. So they have to approve. No, these guys are already approved by the state. Yeah, but now they'll take our recommendation and write. Then they ask. They ask who we recommend for for a bid, right? Yeah, so this is called the state last. Right. This is back to the the state project okay. managed by the town. Gotcha. So the state has a project supervisor that works with the committee and the towns. Okay. So as we get through each little hurdle, we say, hey, we're past that step. And they look at it and say, okay, you can go to the next step. Okay. So the next step is actually, if they agree with the recommendation at the state level, which is VHB, then we'll send a cost request to them. Here's the grant, here's, here's the RFP with everything you have to do from site survey to looking at sidewalk, to looking at Depot Street Crossing, to look at a new pavilion, to look at the ring curve, you know, corral fence issue, um, and give us a cost proposal which would then be reviewed by the state. And if it meets their standards and is reasonable cost and gets the work done that's in the grant tasks, then the select board can award that contract. And then the work work starts. Then the engineer comes to your meetings and says, here's where we are. And they take 18 months or 12 months to finish the work. So it's a multi-step multi, multi -step process. We've gotten through our first. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's the first step is done. Objective offer shipping it into the state. We wait to hear from them. So we need to make a motion to approve one of these three. Yeah. Is that what you want? Yeah. yeah. To accept the recommendation was that we um, that we do with VHB. VHB. Now who is that? Oh, That's the VM. Like, what was it? Yeah, they're they actually. You know, it was really hard to find their name because <laughs> it was like it was like they don't want to be known by their real name i like look in the fine print at the bottom of some page that's right. sure they were no 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 that's how they're known too that's like oh, that's not, okay. yeah i think they do they don't want to be known i know <laughs> that was, i'm not going to be so no, <laughs> not not by their full name because it can barely announce, you know, pronounce it. So they right. they want people they to want use VHB. Oh, yeah. I, I I'm, not abbrevi I'm not abbreviating it. That's how they put all their logos and how yeah. they. Right. I thought he meant they didn't want to be like they didn't want yeah. to be known. Like ABC, you know, it's like ABC. Forget it. That's what I was thinking, but now right. I understand. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's Van Ness. Hangen and Brustlin. Oh dear. Okay. No wonder you're not being treated. Okay. The name you just said from pants. Vanessa, Hangen, and Brustlin. Okay. Yeah, that's their name. Or the HP. Go to the HP. So. Goodness. The recommendation to go with VHB and then the not to exceed the grant project amount for no longer than um, three years, except that there's a provision for a two-year extension if needed. So the state grant would not exceed five years. So the contract would not exceed five years. And if the... Um, so how much money is this actually in taxpayers? Which taxpayers? They fire taxpayers. Ta uh, 7,000. But we already approved this. Yeah. A while ago. Quite a while ago, right? Yeah, yeah you accepted right. the grant with that match. Yeah, that was no money then at all. It was just no. to see about getting the grant. No, no, no. no. no this we accepted is, the grant. We, we, pass, we passed the grant. This is the sec. Okay. You, you passed it with no new tax dollars from the sidewalk reserve money, is where the 20% was coming from. I don't know the date that you guys did a while back. I know it was a little while ago. Yeah, this is this is beyond the grant award stage. This is like after this is the first task. <laughs> There's like five or six at least active grants, so it gets a little confusing. But we always come back with a grant award. So this ain't gonna cost us no money. It's put away already in the reserve. Right. Yes. It's not perhaps. current dollars, not current tax dollars. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's it's off the highway budget, it's in the reserve. 
the reserve is doing pretty well actually we've been putting 25,000 away a year for seven eight years now and we've had deferred projects because of all the grants and conditions so it was really meant to rebuild the sidewalks in the village was one of the main goals and now North Hyde Park is starting to ask for the same thing so I think we'll keep the 25,000 because eventually there'll be some large expenses up there I've noticed a lot of towns, including Richmond, where they have a hybrid solution where the town road crew does all the prep work and gets the grade of the new sidewalks, <laughs> which a lot of times are replacement sidewalks. Right. And then the construction crew, the concrete crew comes in. So it's like a hybrid solution mm -hmm. where it's engineers. Yeah. And they did all the water. They got about eight guys. <laughs> Richmond has more guys. Yeah. Yeah. Can't walk in. And Mark does not want to be constructed. He, he, he reminds me of that almost every day. I'm maintenance. I'm maintenance. Yeah. That's right. So we need a motion to accept the recommendation from the from the selection committee. The selection committee. So I'm making a motion to I'm make sure I'm saying yeah. Making sure I'm understanding that. So I'm yeah. making a motion to accept the VHB engineer that was done by the selection committee. And that's going to be sent to the state for them to send out them for the bid to get the bid. They're get, they're going to accept or they're going to not there. right. They're either they have to approve of the recommendation for the next step. But this is a state. This is your a state engineer anyway. Right? Yeah, this is a project by the state already. And the it's it's right? really, yeah, it's really weird. This okay. It's almost like they want to make sure that the selection mm -hmm. committee did it did their work to pick one to of the pick one of the okay. six. Be two years and we'll be hearing about that. So, so, so the specific motion is to accept the recommendation of the selection committee to hire BHV. And I would I would say that the second part of that is to authorize town administrator to sign necessary paperwork for it keep it for the cot right for the contract <laughs> not to exceed the, the grant thirty thousand dollar project yeah and three it says 58 in here is that a typo yeah okay it's safe so cool so yeah, it's, 30, it's thirty eight thousand yeah. okay it's thirty eight thousand not fifty eight since fifty eight yeah and not to exceed three years uh five five okay Six. Five is the grant. Okay. I'm hoping, I'm hoping okay. for two or three. <laughs> so funny. You should, you should have read that experience. Oh, what's the first thing if I would say, guy? Yeah, right. It's like a photo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, welcome, sons. North Hyde Park. <sighs> Another one that's a little bit weird. Uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> oh, goodness. So the North Hyde Park. Park yeah, Guy and Valley Hall Committee uh, applied for a grant with the state municipal planning grant to develop welcome signs mm -hmm. for North High Park. The original grant was denied. The state found some extra money and town accepted the money. Another 20% grant application. The, the committee worked with regional planning to develop the RFP because every grant has a requirement for so you have to go out the proposal, get consultants. They had six responses, which is really good, all over Vermont for graphic design people. The problem was that the RFP went out with a consultant budget of $9,600, which is the grant. The, the grant project was $9,600, but part of the grant is getting sign locations figured out with neighbors for three easements and getting the sign easement settled for $2,200, which left less than what people were bidding on. So uh, there was no cost proposal. It's the same thing. It's a two-step process. You go with qualifications. The Guyan Valley Hall Committee is recommending SAML Group uh, based on their work with other local towns. And now we have to go back to SAML Group with a modified budget, I would call it, using more <laughs> development reserve fund money than we were originally planning. So that's what's happening today, which is can the board authorize $3,000 from the Economic Development Reserve Fund to support NPG 22, authorize the chair of the Guyan Valley Hall Committee to sign the work contract with the SAML group 
for the welcome sign designs not to exceed 11,600 for the project not to exceed 11,600 out of that 11,600 there are legal and easement parts of that and, and the reason why I'm saying project cost of 11.6 is because 8,600 is from the state and 3,000 is from the reserve. Mm -hmm. But if we can get the easements easier, then we could get more design work done with the community. It's a bunch of community meetings to have everybody up there kind of join together and figure out what North High Park means, what kind of color schemes or images. So they could actually get into it and have like this, I'm going to call it branding, but at least a way to you know set the welcome mat and say, hey, you're in North High Park now. Yeah. So the three signs will identify that area, which has never really been done before. And if you're looking at investment and people that want to know where their place is, they, they're going to know where North High Park starts and you have the, maybe the backside says, thanks for visiting. You know, like, right. So it's kind of like a drive slow, please, that kind of stuff. You know, they can, whatever the community wants up there is what the group will, SAML group will do with the guy and valley hall committee so oh, okay so rather than having a budget of 9600 which included a thousand dollar match from the economic development reserve fund make the project the uh, eleven thousand six with the three thousand dollars from the reserve yeah the 80, 86 and three to get to eleven six of the project but knowing that that money may move up and down based on the sample work versus legal work and will not exceed the eleven six on the whole project so that's the that's the motion. I think the Guyan Valley Hall Committee has been doing great so far with getting to this part. So I give them the author, authorization right, to, to complete the to complete the project. Yeah. yeah, and they report directly to Jen on their expenses now. So I think that's working out for Dale. And I saw yes. Valerie was on earlier, so she's probably. Is it Valerie Valcourt? Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. probably just gonna. Yeah, I don't know. She didn't say she was coming, but uh, yeah. So that would. I think it would be good for the committee to keep going with that. Going there. Different kinds of signs that they've been painting. Yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Um, I will make that motion that's written in this little thing to approve the use of the three thousand dollars from the Economic Development Reserve Fund, and to authorize the chair of the Guyon Valley Hall Committee to sign a work contract with Samuel Group. For the welcome signs in the project not to exceed 11,600. And for the Guyana River Committee to work with the Samuel Group to get this project, keep this project moving. That's good. Second. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, uh, anybody opposed? Anybody in Okay. Yeah, speaking of North High Park, right? Another one. Okay. Yeah, in your packet, you have a, a little image of the water district service area for North High Park, which includes 100 Sea Bridge up to the. We're finally getting ahead of that. No. Industrial Park and up Heath Road and just no. right abuts the Jones Farm on the east side and the entire west side of Route 100, including Mudget. And up to the um, the guard facility. So that area is also the sewer service study area. We don't know if the whole area will be sewered at some point, but this study with the state of Vermont providing a sixty thousand dollar. They're going to go way up to Jones or what? Uh, to the Jones Farm. Yeah, to the Jones Farm. Wow. Yeah, the, their farm comes pretty far to yeah, the it, comes, down to the, it yeah. comes right to the Sharp Bend. You know, on on Ferry Street to change the North Hyde Park route. It's not, it would service potentially the farm, you know, the north side of the farm. Wow, that's far. Yeah, yeah. the farm is huge, but we're not, right. we're not, it doesn't include the Jones property, it just goes right up to it. Right, yeah. So if, if the sewer service area gets a lot of legs and the Jones family, they're in the conservation easements and all right. that other business. Uh, I don't know how long those things last if they're perpetual. So there really is a buffer that they can't do anything with the farm. I don't know that detail of that, but that's the, current study area. The engineers will get involved with it and they'll actually do more refinement of what the study area is at the very beginning. So the decentralized sewer system is done in other places in Wolka and Waitsfield has one. Uh, uh, Westford has one. 
the criticism is that they're wicked expensive and they're really long-term facilities. So it's hard, you know, when somebody looks at a $40,000 septic system for their house, which is on the high end, but not too far these days. And then they say, why is the village building a $2 million sewer system? You know, that's that will be the rub at the end is how much is it going to cost? Where is that money going to come from? The benefit, obviously, is that the constraint for redevelopment and building and commercials and restaurants is all in sewer. So if you remove that constraint, then you have Route 100, Ferry Street, good road network in and out of there, and you have a really good water supply. So then you're left with parking, maybe, and the zoning constraints. So the Planning Commission is working now on zoning constraints to try and lift those up and make those a little flexible. So it would be good to have only a parking problem, which is really off-site parking and maybe the town securing a couple properties up there for you know satellite parking spaces. Yeah. And then having a network to connect everything with sidewalks, which we've talked about right. before. So there is a master plan of sorts developing. This is the this is the key piece is sewer. Without sewer, there you won't see much happen. Might look prettier. You might have a sidewalk, you might have a sign, maybe street trees, but you're not gonna have the kind of redevelopment because of the sewer constraint. And there's that very straight. Property, yep, Heath is poking around trying to figure out what to do with that lumber. Yeah. 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 Good system there, we might be able to get so. On this one, we had a really small selection committee, it was me and Seth Jensen. Seth is the liaison to the Agency of Natural Resources. Okay. Regional Planning Commission has a, a management agreement with the town for this project, so they'll be actually doing most of the legwork with permit compliance and whatnot. At some point, this report will go to the community planning commission select boards where they're at, look for input. Uh, part of it will be an overlap with the fire district number one. So Dave Harvey actually called me today and said, what was that sewer? I see that on your agenda. So you know, people do watch the agenda items. And I said, I said, Dave, I, I think, you know, as far as I know, we're having a recommendation for Du Bois King. And that Du Bois King is actually the one working on their water system upgrade now. They were hired under the ARPA grant that we gave right. Fire District One last year. So it's good to have the same firm on water and sewer. Yeah. Because they'll share the, I'll automatically share information on the same thing. We have to fight. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that from so and so. Yeah. You know, all that. So it's the motion on this is to award the uh, planning advance uh, $60,000, not to exceed $60,000 to Du Bois King for decentralized sewer. Planning study. Man, and you don't have to say this, but it, it's managed by the regional planning office. And uh, Seth will be reporting back on these things from time to time. Now, where did this money come from? This was a grant. It's a it's a planning advance. And what that means is that the state of Vermont Agency of Natural Resources basically has a revolving loan fund for municipal municipal entities to do planning studies. Okay. And it's a loan initially. And if the project gets built, they take that money and roll it into the construction loan as an add-on to the construction loan. If the town decides not to pursue this particular decentralized construction project, then they um, forgive, so, forgive the loan and you don't have to pay it's it. not federal money. State capital no. money, right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they have a choice to forgive it, <laughs> which they do if we don't go forward, or they, uh, or they roll it in to get it roll back. It in to get for the construction project, and then they give it to somebody else after the loans pay back. Got it. So that's how that works. It's really kind of a low risk first phase. Okay. You know, to figure out if it's something to, to pursue for North Lake or the motion. Oh, they're making the motion. Look, it's, written, it's written right down there. So, oh. yeah. The award, Du Bois, King, the sewer planning study for not to exceed amount of 60000 Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Minutes. <clears throat> I wasn't here, so I can't do anything. Come on, can you start approving notice? Okay. That's right. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposing? And then abstention. I'm abstaining. She's out having a wild time. I was. 
<laughs> um, let's see now the finance, the finance memo. That's with the with, with the minutes. We all got from Jennifer. Oh, Jen. Yeah, mm -hmm. here's how I would pay it off. And I set some more of the story never come to me. Um, I didn't see that. Oh, yes, we yeah. there wasn't many. Oh, there's the rest of the Good. Okay. <laughs> oh, we got some. I know she was born a bunch of them. I know. Here's the ones. All right. I was the very nearest job. No. Oh, God, I freeze. <laughs> Turn on the eager. <laughs> yeah, right? It's the library. <laughs> With the windows in it? Chance that it stops. The payoff? Yeah, I <laughs> know. I just wanted to, I didn't want to rip that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you read that up one week. That's true. Q and A. I'm sure I'll need more than that. Oh, you got this in mail. You can pass down to the oh, more recent press. What's that? You got to keep you on your toes. Yeah. Matt, she oh, okay. orders here. Okay. Oh, yeah, I need the. Oh, geez. Oh, oh, nice got me. Oh, and Savannah. Oh, look at you guys. Oh, yeah. So important. Yeah. Is that a check? Yeah. <laughs> 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 <You're all here. laughs> Thank you for your service. You're dismissed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I'll be able to eat one of them. Holy <laughs> God. God, this is nice. I week <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, yeah. hey, there's those. Fun. It's not a thousand weeks. Was there a motion to accept the warrants or sign warrants? Not yet. There's no oh, yeah. yet. So, not quite yet. Well, we could have a little business. Looks like a lot of people greened up. Yeah. Got bags everywhere. I see the roundabouts all got day lines in it. Really looking good with them flowers. Yeah. <laughs> The daffodils were first, and now it's a daylight. Yeah. So. yeah. They put a lot of money into that. They think about those flowers, and you know, they're going to be sad. They got a grant for the dandelions. <laughs> Probably do. <laughs> Village improvement. Plant dandelions. I uh, stayed up at work, you know, in that. Oh, I bet. Yellow flowers that are really poisonous I don't know yeah there's a flower out there I can't think of the name uh, is it the ones that look like carrots from the top is, that, is it the ones that look like carrots like the, the I guess these people are really blister oh, oh yeah. Yeah. So, yeah uh yeah I think you're right um, yeah yeah what is it it's it's a wild I have plant not it's, heard any. Never heard it it's like that yeah, poison ivy, but not really. But I don't know if it has the name of it. Poison oak. No, it's. They um, said they're blistered and bad. Really? Yeah, huh. construction guys are getting over the side of the road. Like turn over. 
Yeah, I just, um, I'm going to say I'm only now. <laughs> I will make a motion to accept the warrants. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Okay. Yeah. Still need a little bit. Yep. Oh. All right, the dogs the other day, they came in and they came in. Oh, oh, but all you do is you, once you get to the tick, like somebody that you go, okay. Yeah, I just can see the show. Why the parsley? I was just kind of Why the parsley? Oh, well, right. Let me see. Yeah, it's not going to be good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 Okay. Well, any updates on any of the old and new business? Well, I don't think so, unless you have questions on those. Um, the hmm. at some point on Centerville Dam, uh, the, that grant application is redirected to a fall, so I don't have anything for that. Okay. Seth is managing the the Guyan River. Okay. Guyan Valley Hall. Erosion issue went through with their own funding, so we won't. Oh, okay. we won't see any of that. Yeah. Oh, great. Initially, we were going to apply for a grant, and then Seth called and said, "We have some technical money that's we have to spend by the end of June." I said, "I said, I, well, I probably need five, ten thousand, and he said, "We can do that." Perfect. Yeah. So I said, "Nothing for me to do." No, I'll just report. <laughs> Even better. Yes. <laughs> they do the hiring and the paying and everything. Yeah. So they, Take it. I did add the ARPA list to. Uh, your May 23rd agenda. So I'll yeah, try, to keep, we'll try to keep that kind of clear. Perfect. Last couple of meetings have been really heavy on action items. It's just the spring thing, I think. So yeah. but I don't, hopefully, won't have to add that much for the 23rd and we could have more time on that. Great. Um, as I go down the list, I may invite people okay. if they can better explain their situation yeah. than I can. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. to keep maybe idea. a guest list on ARPA mm -hmm. versus yeah. the random stuff. Right. Good idea. I think that's just a, it's a really it's it's I don't feel late, but I feel like we need to do something. Well, I'm just doing it. It's got to be going. Eventually, it's going to be late. You know? Right, and then we're going to be rushing, and we're not. Gonna, yeah. yeah. Right. And then the beam road thing, I haven't heard back from the engineer, but I'm going to get a plan for the stormwater on that, and that will take off. Like uh, David said, because he's ready to do stuff, but he has a he has to have a plan on stormwater easements. As Roland knows, you can't. You know, it's, it's like the new standards. You can't build in a 50 foot right away. You know, they want you to disperse water earlier but there's no easements unless the town has been really good about the cutouts you mean for that culvert to go across the road and yeah up on up, up on, before you come down the hill yeah, right halfway right. up the hill and then at the end of the road we're thinking of readjusting the culvert near the barn to get it sort of directed away from that barn a little bit at the very end where smith we talked about a catch basin there yep. or something yeah because there's a big hole in the ground right now yeah so anyway those things are all how did it work this winter I haven't heard anything from neighbors or the highway crew. No. The only thing. It's all right. Right. No, yeah. Only, and Scott was here. <laughs> Scott was here. Right. We did get one call from uh, Mr. Smith at the Jerry Smith at the very end of the road looking for a status report. And I told him I'd give you guys an update so you knew it wasn't dead. But it's just one of those things where engineers and consultants have their own schedule these days. And just like, I don't even. I was Jennifer and I were having this conversation about projects in general and how we can't. I mean, I remember when you had people say, let's get this project going, and you could actually make it move. Yeah. And now we still, can we get this project moving? And then somebody says, yeah, I lost my crew, so I can't. Yeah. You have to find somebody else, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's just different. It's just way different. But okay. I guess that's, that's all the updates I had. Yeah. Okay. I have a question for the board. Um, have you, are you folks considering making a grant position or just keeping that with the town administrative position? Because I've been looking at grants more and I have a liking for that, like just like the assessor and taking minutes and stuff like that. So I haven't, this is news to him too. But if you folks are considering making a grant position like a part time, I would be interested in learning the ways and so on. It's good to know that, and I would say we don't have an answer. Yeah, we remember when we figured that all out. We got the position in the time. Do you have any applications for zoning? 
Uh, one. Which one you forget it? Yeah, there was one person from Massachusetts. I think was looking just to see what uh, they could do, maybe sometime. But you know, I'd rather have more than one. So uh, yeah, the highway job and the planning job are going to be back in um, a newspaper on Thursday. Okay, and as well as seven days for the planning job on when tomorrow. I guess it comes out. Of, mm -hmm. It's it's online now. The planning and zoning job on seven days online, but it's not on the print okay. edition until tomorrow. So. Okay. okay. We might benefit from a brief executive session. Yep, we can do that. Or we can have out some at the end of the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it can take long. I don't think there's well, anything else after the end of the day. Well, yeah. like yeah. the end of the night. I'm just I'm thinking about Greenmount Access can sign off. Right. Oh, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna sign off, then we can stop yeah. the recording. So, yeah, we're not adjourning. I could hmm. come back for more we're than an adjournment. Yeah. Probably. Okay. okay. Anything else in time to we'll go into executive session? Recording stopped. There we go. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>